The cryptoverse is changing so fast that what I say in this video might already be out of date or it could be an accurate forecast of what hasn't happened yet. I'm talking about FTX's total collapse in the past week and the immediate effects this is having on, well, all cryptocurrencies. Now, to accurately predict the future, you must first understand the past. And the more history you know, the better you understand your current environment and how it's likely to change. This makes me think of high school students who complain that history class is boring and then pull out their phones and watch TikTok or crypto videos. It's like smartphones have always existed and your mom's always been middle-aged and overweight. You don't understand that once she was so hot, someone banged her and out you came. You'll go through this too, so the sooner you know the history of, well, what's happened, then you can understand what is happening and what will happen. In our last episode, I talked about some of the history of FTX and how it was fatally linked to Binance. Remember that there was an ongoing feud between the owners of FTX and Binance and that when FTX started to collapse, Binance offered to save it and then backed out of the potential deal of a lifeline. But how did FTX even rise to power? Currency exchange, specifically cryptocurrency exchange. In 2017, Sam Bankman fried the founder of FTX, magically realized that money could be made in crypto. So he founded Alameda Research to make some trades or rather quick money. He discovered that Bitcoin prices in the US were 10% less expensive than in Japan. So he started with just 200 bucks buying Bitcoin in the US and then he'd sell it in Japan for instant profit. Do this enough times and it will eventually become exponential in profit. Alameda was soon trading 10 to 15 million in Bitcoin this way per day. That's a lot and that's the beauty of the cryptoverse. It should be pointed out, however, that the 200 starter fund wasn't quite enough to scale it up to that massive amount of money that Alameda was making. A lot of it was borrowed. To be able to borrow money, you have to look good on paper. That's why a name like Alameda Research was chosen, instead of a more accurate and less reputable name like uh, Fraudcoin, I mean Freudcoin, because everything is symbolic and double entendres are often Freudian slips, which of course are based in the subconscious. Eventually, Alameda was trading in massive amounts of every single crypto coin there was and making 4 or 5% per month. This is actually a substantial amount. Remember my analogy in a past video about capitalism and constant growth. If ancient Egypt still existed today and they had a similar amount of growth like 4 or 5% per year and not even per month, then the ancient Egyptian economy today would be so big it would expand to the orbit of Neptune. Obviously, this is not sustainable. Anyhow, Alameda Research eventually grew to be one of the biggest crypto traders in existence. It only made sense that they would launch their own crypto coin, FTT, in 2019. There's a lot of dubious information swirling around these events at this time. For example, was Bankman Freed the CEO and for how long? What specifically was his relationship with FTX as the supposed CEO of Alameda? All of this looks like something Jack Ryan would get suspicious about and would have to travel to the Bahamas to figure out. Did I mention the Bahamas? That's ironic. Why? The Bahamas just so happens to be one of those locations on this planet where people who want to hide their money can easily form companies, or shelf companies in particular, that are in turn owned by other companies, which are in turn owned by other companies, and so on. It's a rabbit hole for tax evasion, money laundering, and even terrorist financing. I'll get back to this in a moment. Last weekend, it was reported that over a billion dollars in investor funds had gone missing from FTX. Insiders report that Bankman Freed had secretly transferred approximately 10 billion from FTX to Alameda Research, and that somewhere along the way, hackers had stolen nearly 400 million of that amount. A representative of FTX said that they had detected numerous unauthorized transactions, so they had moved all digital assets to cold storage, which is a catchword for offshore accounts. For example, the Bahamas. Now, according to the Financial Times, FTX had a billion in easily sellable assets, compared to 9 billion in liabilities. That's a convenient coincidence, but I should also point out that the dust kicked up from this hurricane is still far from settling, and there is still, as of yet, no confirmation about any of these massive numbers floating around in the air. How much is missing? How much is owed? How much was FTX worth? Who invested how much? We'll find out eventually because, well, we're talking about blockchain technology, which is easily verifiable if you know how to look. Once money starts making its way to the Bahamas, however, that's when it gets tricky. So where is Bankman Freed anyhow? Is he in Silicon Valley? Is he even in the US? No, he's in the Bahamas. A fun site called Flight Tracker 24 tweeted early Saturday morning that he had fled the Bahamas for Argentina. 
But Bankman Fried himself later denied that, claiming he was still in the Bahamas. Argentina, I should point out, does actually have an extradition treaty with the US, so it wouldn't be the ideal place for him to go anyhow. He can't go to the US as there are supposedly probes waiting for him from the Department of Justice, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and more. It has even been reported that Bankman Fried, as well as two or three of his top execs, are being held under supervision by authorities in the Bahamas. What exactly this means at this time, I do not know. It could just be house arrest or an oral agreement that they won't leave the country. There is also a rumor that he is actually in custody. But the biggest rumor is that Bankman Fried is trying to figure out how to get to Dubai, and there is no extradition treaty with the US in the United Arab Emirates. Dubai, no more FTT. Future Digital is brought to you from Estonia, the crypto capital of the European Union. This episode's fact about Estonia is about an art form that has existed here for over 12 years now, and I'm talking about stand-up comedy. 12 years ago, Estonia's first stand-up troupe, Comedy Estonia, was formed by two Americans, an Australian and an Estonian. I am one of those two Americans, and the other American is named Eric Sufert. Eric was never an especially funny guy, and the number of boos he received in its shows won him a Guinness World Record. Okay, 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 okay. Eric, <laughs> hey man, what are you doing here? Yeah, thanks for that intro, Stu. Hey, you you want to give the Estonian fact? Will do. My name is Eric, and I'm here today to present a fact about Estonia. The town hall square in Estonia's capital, Tallinn, was the site of the first ever publicly displayed Christmas tree, which happened for the first time in 1441. A merchant society called the Brotherhood of the Blackheads would erect a Christmas tree in their guild hall during the Christmas holiday season. And on the last night of celebrations, they would drag the tree to the town hall square, dance around it, and then burn it down. Luckily, they left their Christmas presents at the guild hall so they wouldn't be destroyed in the fire. Because in medieval Estonia, iPads were even more expensive than they are today.